Yeah, so this has been kind of a common theme, I think, of the day. So um, hopefully you'll find this relevant. Uh, the way I frame the, the presentation I'll do today is uh, kind of with this grid. Um, TLA Plus clearly and related tools clearly have like a really valuable niche that they fill. But the question it becomes, how can we kind of stretch that out, both to where um, it can be, those techniques can be used for more mainstream problems, as well as how can we make the tools more accessible to just kind of your mainstream developers. And I think there's actually a virtuous cycle there where if people can use it for more problems, they can get it more as a tool that's close at hand. And if it's close at hand, then you're more likely to use it for more tools. So uh, this is the way I'll think of it, and this is what I'll talk about. And basically, I'm not going to try to argue whether it's um, a good idea to do this or even whether it's theoretically possible to do this. I'm just going to try to talk about um, some of the specific techniques that we've used in uh, uh, a library called Halite, where we've uh, tried to accomplish this. Um, a few years ago, I spoke at this conference and I presented on a system called SALT, which was kind of an early preview of this idea. That was basically a proof of concept. Halite is the direct successor to that, and it's now kind of a proper implementation. So it has uh, docs and uh, it's rigorously coded and all those sorts of things. So. Uh, this is basically the, the agenda that I'll be hit, trying to hit today. So Halite is uh, it's open source, so it's, it's up on GitHub. It is uh, a Clojure library. So Clojure, if you're not familiar, it's a Lisp that runs on the, on the JVM. And so Halite is just a, a library in Clojure. Um, yeah, so I'll do a quick just a really quick intro to some of the Halite syntax. And this, it's all done in closure syntax. So an even quicker rundown is closure. The curly brackets are associative arrays, so key value pairs. And then the colon foo, that's just a, a closureism. That's a keyword. It's just a symbol that evaluates to itself. So it's just a, uh, they're commonly used as keys in, in maps. So this is a Halite spec, so it has a name. Um, and then it has uh, fields. So there's three fields in the spec, and, and they're typed. Um, Halite instances, they're not to be confused with TLA plus instances, but if a spec defines a state space, then in Halite, an instance defines a state. So this is a state um, that is one of the states defined by the spec. So it identifies which spec it is, and then structurally, this has to you know, have the same fields as, as in the spec. Specs also have constraints. So you can have uh, arbitrary expressions over the fields in the, in the spec, pretty much like you'd expect from TLA+. If you make a highlight instance, not only does it have to structurally match the specs, but it has to uh, uh, satisfy all the, all the predicates from all the constraints. And so in highlight, you, you can't actually, like you can't make an instance um, without it satisfying the constraints. So if you tried to make one that, that didn't, you would get a, a runtime error as soon as you, you tried, to, tried to create it. Uh, I should say, basically all the code I'm gonna show is from the Halite uh, documentation. And um, it's made to run like in the closure REPL. So these are closure data structures that you could you know, type into a, a buffer and evaluate. And that applies to both the specs and the instances. So when you go to evaluate this instance, it would only evaluate if uh, and evaluate to itself, but only if it satisfied all the constraints. And so there's nothing explicitly in Halite that supports uh, temporality, but you can model it. So if we had a spec, this is a vending machine example. So if we had a spec that captured the state of a vending machine, you could make an, uh, a spec on top of that, basically, that had two instances of that um, spec, one for the current state, one for the next state and then have additional constraints. And at that point, you're, you're modeling a state machine and all your constraints specify uh, you know, the valid transitions. So what were some uh, collaboration features that specifically pop out of there? So uh, the, you, if you might have noticed that the spec names themselves, they look kind of cryptic here. Well, they're, they're all versioned. So um, everything's immutably written once, or you know, the idea is that everything's immutable. Um, and so uh, if you want to change a spec, you don't actually change like the previous version of it, but you make a new, a new instance or a new spec with a new version that has the changes that you want. And that's just in keeping with kind of the closure mindset of, 
immutable data structures. Uh, in addition to that, the, the keywords that we're using to name the specs, those are namespaced. And so this is just the common technique, right, where you just hierarchically kind of break out, break down the, the uh, namespace so that different people can administer different parts of it. So then uh, there's two features in Highlight that lets you uh, have references between specs. One is uh, via refinement. So that's just uh, pretty much TLA plus refinement. So in this example, there's a spec X, which has fields X, Y, and Z. And there's a spec A, which has fields B, C, and D. And then this refinement defines how uh, A refines to X. And this is the expression that, um, that governs that. And uh, at the REPL, you can uh, exercise refinement. So if you had an instance of A, so this is a, a state from that, that A state space, you can ask it to uh, be translated into or refined to the, um, the state space from X. And then this is the, the result that it would produce. So by, by working in the closure REPL like this, um, the things that we're doing, they are, you know, uh, you, you can evaluate them, you can run them. And so to like Finn's point, um, we've implemented systems where uh, we've literally, you know, written the spec and that just literally is what our code calls. Like it is evaluated as part of our system. So um, it's only appropriate for like, like you wouldn't want it in the, like the critical path of like a really tight loop or something like that. But assuming the, the non-functional constraints are, are, are relaxed enough, you could just uh, simply evaluate the specs and evaluate instances to, uh, to drive your, your system logic. So in addition to refinement, uh, specs also compose. So I've, I've kind of shown it in some of the examples, but here I just call it out specifically. So here I have spec B with, with one field, and I have spec A with a field which is of type spec B. So you can reference one spec from the other. And uh, that translates into instances like this. So if I want to have an instance of A, um, and then I can have in nested inside of that an instance of, of B. So those are the, the specific collaboration features. So then the question is, what does that look like uh, when you go into like the enterprise and you've got uh, a large organization trying to adopt a technology like this? So uh, just stylized here, we can think of uh, two different groups in a, a large organization and you carve out and give them different parts of the namespace. Um, it's not a direct, directly a part of Halite, but you could imagine um, you know, setting up Alice over here and Bob over here, like they're the administrators of their parts of the namespace. So they control who, who can make contributions to, to their parts. Um, and then, so this group up here, they make, they make a spec. As I said, it's immutable, it's uh, versioned. So they make some spec and it can be referenced by a specific identifier. And then some other group can come along and make their own spec. And it can uh, re refer back to the specs made by another team. And since we've got these immutable versioned identifiers, we know exactly what they're referring to. And even if this original group continues to do their work and continues to evolve their specs, um, it doesn't break what the other group has done. Um, it's more like a model where, um, you know, if group B wants to get caught up with the latest from group A, then they would decide basically when to when to make that change, when to, when to upgrade to the new version of the specs. So the way I like to think of this is what it's allowing is um, concurrent distributed authoring of the specs. So both across space and across time, we've kind of got some facilities to, to, to manage that. And these things, I mean, they, they sound pretty mundane. They're, we're quite used to techniques like this uh, from you know, most of the, the things we work with. And it's just a question of like, how does it fit well with, with formal methods? Like how can we kind of bring the, the things that are just kind of table stakes for what enterprise developers expect, how can we bring that into, uh, marry that up with the, the formal method space? So what are some specific uh, workflows we have here? So um, as, I, as I said before, um, all these examples are uh, coming from the docs and they're all things that you can actually just evaluate in the closure REPL. Um, so the syntax I'm showing here is you can type an expression like this, which is this is all halite, and then um, this is what the REPL would produce when, when you invoke that, or when you evaluate that form. Another technique we use is uh, uh, this idea of literate specs. So 
it's kind of small, but uh, you don't need to read it all. But the, the idea is this is a, a, a what, this is a system we use for all the examples. So if you look at the examples, you'll see this. But it's meant to be used by the users as well. So um, you can just make a, a markdown document and then embed in that uh, highlight snippets. Uh, those highlight sn snippets can either be defining specs or they can be uh, using specs, building instances. And um, then when it's, uh, the page is rendered, we'll uh, evaluate all the expressions and make sure that they all evaluate. And if uh, there's not an example in this page, but uh, you can say um, what, an, what an expression is expected to evaluate to, and the page will only render if it actually uh, does evaluate to that. So you can have some confidence that uh, the things that you're writing are actually true. And then it's not part of Highlight proper, but you could imagine then uh, fitting this into a larger workflow where the users could, could edit this, right? They could edit it interactively, so they can kind of kind of play with it and see, see what happens if they make a change. And uh, uh, that, I think, again, that's part of the enterprise experience that people are looking for, is to be, be able to just pick up a tool and just start you know, messing with it and seeing what it does. That's a key part of the, the, the learning process. In addition to having uh, things that, that work, you can include in the literate spec here uh, things that are, that are expected to fail. And so this is an example where uh, we're trying to do a transition that's not valid. And so if you try to try to make this instance, it will throw. And that's what I was talking about before. You can't uh, construct an invalid instance. Um, so one of the ideas, one of the promises of Halite, which isn't really fully realized, but it's, it's the idea, is that um, if users will express their models using Halite, um, which doesn't bring in a lot of the kind of the mathematical things, and it's kind of more of what you'd expect as a developer. Well, kind of the promise is that if, if you do that on the development side uh, for your work, then there can be folks over um, kind of behind the curtain that are doing things to, uh, to map highlight specs into various uh, formal tools. So you can imagine, um, early on with Salt, we had it mapped to TLA plus. So you could run, uh, you know, transpile your, your specs over to, to TLA plus. We don't actually have that with Highlight. We got kind of distracted with, with other things, but what we do have is um, this constraint propagation. So um, this is really kind of a, just a silly example, but here's a, this is a spec um, that has two fields, X and Y, and it has this constraint over them, which is just a, a weird way of saying or. But the point is you can have some, some Highlight expression here. And then you can plug in an instance. Um, technically, this isn't a, an instance. This is a, a separate data structure. Uh, that allows us to do partial instances. So this is saying, well, if I had an instance and I knew that X was false, then perform constraint propagation to tell me what you can discover about the other fields. And so in this case, it's able to walk through these expressions and determine that, well, if X is false, then there's only one possible value of Y, and that's true. Um, it's not really uh, unpacked here, but in addition to just scalar values, there can be, um, you can have like enumerations of values or ranges of values here. So it is a little bit more useful than, than what you see here. Um, and to do this, we're integrating with a library called Chaco, which is a constraint solver. It's a Java library. Uh, we're not using it for its solving, but they actually expose their uh, uh, constraint propagation as a separate facility. So we're, we're using that constraint propagation. So this is what we've done uh, in Halite. We've built these features and we think we kind of just maybe move the needle a little bit in terms of making uh, these formal methods accessible and applicable. Yep. So Halite being closure-based, does it uh, generate things for the TLA checker, TLC to model check? Do you have a model checker? No. So mm -hmm. um, that's why I referenced. So the early incarnation of this was called SALT. Mm -hmm. And what it does is, it did is, still does, it transpiles the closure code into TLA plus. So the idea is that you do the model in, okay. in SALT or Halite and then generate TLA plus code and you do the, the normal run TLC to, to check it. Oh, okay. So yeah. Halite code generates to TLA plus and yeah. then you TLC check it. That's the idea. And, awesome. and Halite doesn't have any temporal support, so you have to bring all the properties in, like downstream of Halite. You have to bring the properties in at, at model check time. Got it. Uh, yeah. Another question is like closure, 
I'm not very familiar, but I know Jepson tools are written in Clojure. Is there a, I don't know, but probably not then because this generates TLA plus, so, okay. Uh, what are some use cases um, you use um, salt and uh, halite uh, at work? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm not prepared to talk about that, but I can, okay. yeah. <laughs> Future talk, maybe. Maybe, could be. Um, yeah, that was all I had. Round of applause. Thank you. I think we have a minute or two for, for uh, follow-up questions. Anybody? Other? Okay. So is the, uh, the main appeal then of like a functional language like Clojure is uh, essentially trying to get you know, composition as we've been talking about the, you know, implement all the way down or fine all the way down and just more, just more compositional. Is that the main idea? Uh, the main idea with Clojure would be, um, so I work a lot in the Clojure, like I work in the Clojure space, so I work on Clojure teams. And so I'm bringing the formal methods to the teams that, that I work with. That's kind of the, I mean, yeah. All right, uh, so thanks for an interesting presentation. Um, so you've described a lot of interesting kind of modularity features in Halite. Um, given that I'm likely to be working in tools that also require modularity in kind of a TLA plus adjacent space, is there a way I could find any public information on Halite to study it further in my own time, or is this more just a sneak peek and we don't get to see any other bits? Oh, no, no. Um, it's all here. Oh, I forgot that slide. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I tried Googling it and found a bunch of uh, completely unrelated things called Halite, so I'll, uh, I'll yeah. go find that. It's Thank this you. One. So I had a question about modularity. I was just wondering, you know, you told us about the features and how you expected people to use them, but can you tell us a little bit about like lessons learned, like people actually using these features and like what is, I, I guess like where does modularity work well or where there's some constraints that you hit against? So I don't know if it's directly answering your question, but I'll, I'll share this. So uh, when I did SALT, I was all jazzed up with TLA+. Plus. So that was my primary focus. It was you know, I want to write TLA plus. As we, as Halite was built, it ended up focusing more and more on um, data modeling itself, something more akin to what you used to see with Alloy, right? Um, so there's still the aspiration there, like, oh, we want to get to, uh, you know, temporal checking of state machines, but like right now it's just, specify like what goes in and what comes out and what are the rules that uh, you know govern whether that data is correct and I think it's okay that that's the way it goes because it fits with the whole mentality of kind of meeting developers where they are and let's get it into their toolbox and then once you build up a body of these specs now there's a natural path of progression to say uh, can we pick up the, the full state machine behavior stuff Thank you. Um, sure. Another round of applause.